Hi guys, I know I'm a bit late to the game with this review, but I thought better late than never and I was personally really interested in this device myself and I wanted to test it. It is the Dell Venue 8 Pro, maybe one of the most popular Windows 8.1 8-inch tablets and is it really that good or is it just affordable what makes it so popular? Let's find out in my full review. Let's start the review with the key specs of this device. We have an 8 inch display with a resolution of 1280 x 800, powered by the Intel Atom Z3740, 2 GB of RAM, it has a weight of 395 grams, 32 GB of storage with SD card support. That's not a lot, but that's about it. Let's get over to the ports. Ok, let's get around the device and check the ports. At the top we have the Windows button and the headphone jack, on the left hand side we have nothing, at the bottom we have the mono speaker and on the right side we have the microphone, the SD card slot, the volume rocker, the power button and the micro USB port. It is micro USB 2.0, no HDMI sadly. The placement of the buttons is okay but I would wish this whole thing to be more to this side and the USB to be on that side but it's not big but it's usually there. The windows buttons may be placed a bit weirdly because you are used to one on the front but you get used to it and I think it's pretty nice, definitely nothing to complain here. So that's about the ports. Let's take a look at the design and the build quality. The device is fairly light for an 8 inch device with 395 grams. The weight is greatly balanced if you are typing in portrait mode, this is pretty nice. The size is really nice for an 8 inch device. The bezels are pretty much balanced perfectly. You can nicely hold it in landscape but also without even having to, to be afraid of touching it in portrait mode, that is pretty nice. The curve on the back you can see it is pretty nice but I would have wished for this edge not to be there. It should be a whole curve because it feels a bit weird if you hold it like this and you hold onto the edge. It would be nicer to hold onto the curve but it's not really a big problem. The back material though is second to none. It feels awesome, is super grippy, great against fingerprints and like I said it just feels great in the hand. The device itself feels very solid. Let's just turn it off. It feels very solid. There is no squeaking or anything like this. It doesn't bend really or anything. So in overall, the build quality is amazing. Premium feel material, very comfortable and clever design. Only the edge could have been a bit more rounded. And there's one thing with the display and the build quality I will talk about in the display section. Ok, let's head over to the display and talk about that. We have an 8 inch display with a resolution of 1280 x 800. This is not high res but also not as bad as expected. For the given resolution it's pretty nice. It is ultra bright if you need it to as you can maybe see here but it won't come over on the video. But it is not super dim. On some certain positions maybe for some people at night it could be even too bright. It was no issue for me but definitely the very bright display is the right thing. As for the display, for the whites, as you can see the whites now look pretty nice but out of the box they were a bit too warm, slightly on the yellow side but this can easily be fixed as I did without on the driver side, that's no problem. As for the blacks they are totally solid, pretty deep without losing any detail so that's a nice thing. I saw no visible backlight bleeding. It is totally uniform and that's a nice thing because if you have backlight bleeding it can diminish the experience. As for the colors and that's one thing I'm really happy about. They are very brilliant and very vivid but still for some reason very natural. There's an awesome balance made here. It is nice to see punchy colors and still very natural tones so that's nice. As for the viewing angles they are totally stable. My camera has a bit of problem picking it up so ok let's forget that. But as for the viewing angles they are totally solid and even 45 degree angles are way better than on most other tablets. Of course it loses a bit brightness but that's always the thing. There is one thing though, the screen responsiveness sometimes is a bit wonky I would say. For some reason sometimes it picks up a scroll attempt as a, as a, as a tap or sometimes even as a double tap. It is way more noticeable even on the Dell Venue 11. I fixed it somehow slightly doing a, a factory reset but for some reason it sometimes just happens and for no really particular reason. But in overall it is about as good as a 1280x800 screen can get. All attributes are top notch and personally the low res the only small hurdle after all isn't as bad as expected. Of course a high res display is nice but it makes sense on Windows 8.1 due to the scaling 
but I would still have preferred a, top, uh, a full HD display. But I will talk about this in the direct comparison with the ThinkPad 8. But if you don't have a direct comparison with a full HD display and only look at this, it will still give you a way than more pleasurable experience. And I was really a pri surprised by that because I didn't expect I would like it because on the Acer W4, I still had a big issue with the resolution after all. So in overall, pretty nice display for the given resolution. There is one more thing about the display I wanted to mention. And this is something really weird because if you use the device tablets only by its weight, you will see this point here. And this is if you hit back, squeeze it at the back, you always see this point wherever you hit. And even by its own size and sometimes it's even, it's still visible after a while, as you can see here. They should have maybe made this a bit more stable back there. Otherwise, it doesn't really do anything. As you can see, it's pretty stable all around. But if you hit it, this point for some reason always lights up a bit more. In daily use, you don't really notice it, but I wanted to mention it because it just is a bit weird, I would say. Just so you know it. It's time to check the sound now. I will quickly give you a, a small demo and then I will talk about it and tell you what I think of it. Okay, so let me tell you what I think about it. You only have a mono speaker, but the position is okay. There is a bit of room of improvement because sometimes in landscape you still block it because as you can see, this is directly where my finger is. It is not really an issue due to the loudness itself overall because the device can get very loud. It is among the loudest on the market, louder than the Acer W4, which was already nice. And I would say only the Dell Venue 11 Pro is louder, but of course that's an 11 inch and way bigger. For the size, there is a nice amount of bass, the mids are good, no harsh treble and that is really nice. Sometimes though, it tends to distort on maximum volume on certain higher frequencies. This is especially notable if you are watching YouTube videos and someone speaks very loud without any filter into the microphone. As for the mono speaker, the mono speaker is not a bad thing at all. Better a good mono speaker than a bad stereo speaker. So in overall, we have a great maximum volume, good tonal balance, really satisfying considering the size and what the competitors have to offer here. So in overall, definitely one of the better ones and I would really wish for at least something like this of a sound experience on every tablet because the overall sound experience is really great. As for the performance, we have an overall very zippy experience in the modern UI app. You won't see any app really stutter or anything like this. The performance is really great. Again, the scrolling is super smooth. There is never anything to complain here. This is really a nice thing because it still delivers you the best browsing experience. In daily use, there is almost no difference to the Z3770, which you can see maybe in the Dell Venue 11, Intel Vagere version, the Intel ThinkPad 8 or the HP Omni 10. It is only noticeable if you have a direct comparison. It is noticeable, but like I said, only in the direct comparison. The RAM with two gigabytes is totally fine in tablet use, I would say. And since you don't have an HDMI, you won't really get that much multitasking done anyways. So it should be fine for lighter multitasking. If you maybe use a keyboard for office stuff, it is definitely worth it. Definitely no problem. Disk speeds are about average. You get about 120, I think, read speeds and about 50, 60 in write speeds. I'm not completely sure right now, but it doesn't matter. The speed is definitely fine for what it does. The Wi-Fi performance and reception is very good, almost on ThinkPad 8 level, but not, uh, not really on Dell Venue 11 Pro. One thing I noticed though, this device slightly gets warm after longer use and the screen then gets a bit flaky because maybe you can see it right now. If it gets warm, it doesn't really respond that good on the display touch anymore. It is no really big issue, but just so you know, maybe if it happens and when it gets warm, it is somewhere around here and on the plastic it feels a bit weird because the warm plastic feels weirder than the, the warm aluminum on the ThinkPad. It's no issue and I do, but the reason is I don't really see why it gets warm because you I don't change my tasks and did the same stuff and I'm already on the latest spring update with the latest beers so that shouldn't be the issue. Let's check the PDF performance real quick. And this is something I'm still really happy about because as you can see, PDF performance on Windows 
still is very nice. Sometimes it has to re-render, but if you are using normal speeds like this, you won't have any trouble. If it re-renders, it is visible, but that's even on the best ones available here. So definitely PDF performance on Windows still absolutely great. So in overall, you get a very nice browsing experience. I would say even the best out on any tablet. The modern UI apps are super smooth, super solid. Office work is absolutely no issue as long as you do, don't do too many tasks at once. A few tabs open, maybe an office program should be no problem at all. And I don't think this, this tablet is really made for much more because you don't have the HDMI. So I don't think it's really a hardcore office. It's maybe more like an office on the go and therefore it does the job very well. Let's talk about one very important thing, the battery life. A full charge from 5% to 100% takes about 3 hours. This is very good considering most others need at least 3.5, maybe some 4, but usually no one is really faster than 3 hours, so that's great. The battery lo lasts super long, I have to say. If you check the stats here, I got an average of 7 hours of active screen time with 200 hours of connected standby. And the connected standby as on any other Windows tablet, is very great. You maybe have 1% every two hours of connected standby. And as you can see, I got everything from around six hours to even eight hours. And I would even say on light or moderate use, eight hours of display on time is no problem. Like, like you can see here, the average is at seven, but this is with some higher tasks through the day when I played games, as you can see here. But usually expect about seven, seven and a half, Eight, no problem. If you if you are doing office stuff and typing a lot, it would even consume way less, I would say. So again, as I told already, it gets slightly warm if you're using it on heavier tasks, but this should be really no problem. Only the screen sometimes gets a bit responsibility issues, but responsiveness issues, but and overall, the battery is definitely way better because just a quick comparison, my ThinkPad has an average of five and a half hours. So this gets me at least one and a half hours in average more, which is usually even two hours in general life. So battery life is definitely great. Let's talk about the software now, which is pretty important. And I'm already using the Windows 8.1 Spring Update, which you can see here, it offers you nice additional features like the modern UI apps on the taskbar and a lot of other nice stuff. I really like this. This is definitely a nice overall experience enhancement to the one before. The system itself is very reliable, stable. Sometimes it gets a few rare hiccups and micro freezes. It is not RAM dependent though. I don't really know why it happens, but I had some occasional blue screens before the update, right? After the last update, it's fine, but it seems to have a bit of a stability issue here and there. It is nothing really big, but I wanted to mention it. For the RAM, you don't really get often more than 70% in normal use. So 2GB of RAM isn't really that bad after all, I would say. I'm usually at 50-60% on casual use. And if I do a bit more, like I said, 70%, only if you do a lot of multitasking and you won't want it to use as a desktop, then it would get higher and get you into problems. But otherwise, it's okay. It uses 32 gigabytes of storage. Inbuilt, and this is a bit of a problem because out of the box you get maybe a slightly over seven gigabytes, and I don't even have much on my tablet, and only three gigabytes left. Of course, you have the SD card slot, so maybe you should check maybe some articles. I found one, some uh, a few nice ones that help you to get along with the lower amount of storage. Let's check the digitizer status, though. I think this is pretty interesting for some people. Let's open a new page. Okay, let's take a quick look at the digital status support. I will talk about it more in my SSR special, but as for now, I wanted to show you if you, some people always have problems at the sites and I really don't see any problem with this data. It works as you can see completely up to the bottom. It gets down there as you can see here, maybe it, it is something I didn't notice before for some reason, but it gets down. And here's the one thing. If you make a faster stroke, the faster it is, the faster it will get from the edge. If you do a slow one, it gets to the edge, but the more fast you go, the further ahead you will stay. I think this is pretty obvious, but otherwise, if you want to press harder or lighter, this really isn't an issue. It is very responsive. It works pretty nice. So I didn't really have an issue. I don't, I'm not skilled in drawing or noting anything, so 
I'm not really the perfect person, but just so you can see this, it works somehow okay, I would say. I don't really know. I didn't ever know, maybe because I never did it that slow, but I never saw it getting down to the edge. But I see it right now. I didn't check the Surface Pro 2 back then because I didn't even bother to check the stylus at all. But maybe this will help if you want to see more or anything specific about the stylus. Just leave me a comment and I will put it in the accessoire special. But that's it for the stylus right now. Okay, let's end this review with a summary, my personal opinion, and then I will answer two questions which I think are pretty important. So let's start with the summary. You get a good but not perfect button layout. It is improvable and it has a bit room for more. As for display, it is low res, but therefore it is one of the if not the best low res display available on the market. Nice colors and everything. Really a satisfying experience overall. As for the sound, the sound is great. Very loud, very good tonal balance and I would wish for every tablet to have at least a sound like this. Nothing to complain here, definitely one of the better ones available on the market. As for the performance, it is undeniably there. All the other competitors have about the same specs and sides, so it will be hard to find anything really faster. Maybe besides the ThinkPad 8 which has the 3770. But as for this low budget tablet, you won't really find anything better. The performance is there and it's really more about the hardware and the display and things like that. As for the battery, the battery life is absolutely fantastic. I get easily through two, three days and I don't think I would even be able to kill it in one day. So battery life is fantastic. Regarding the software, it is pretty much the same all the other competitors offer. Maybe some apps are different pre-installed, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. It has a few rare hiccups and a slight stability issue, but I think those things can be fixed pretty easily. And my ThinkPad 8 is even more unstable, so that's not the issue. For a price of 200 to 250 dollars, there's not really much you can do wrong here. You get fantastic hardware, a solid and smart OS, and the low res is even less of a problem I would have expected before. It is great for casual content consuming and light office work on the go, so this is not a problem. I think it's not really meant for anything more than this. As for my personal opinion and comparing it to other tablets I tested and here the closest thing would be the Acer W4. I think this one is better in about every single aspect, but it only lacks of the HDMI, which could be a deal breaker for some others, but therefore it offers the stylus, which then on the other hand is a pretty big benefit. Okay, now ending this review, I want to answer two questions which I think are pretty important. Would I recommend this device and would I buy it for myself? Would I recommend it? Yes, totally, if you're okay with the low res and don't need the HDMI, then you get a really pretty close to perfect device in overall. B besides maybe some minor flaws. But would I buy it for myself? And here I have to say yes and no. No, because I want Full HD, I'm a sucker for high resolution and I really love my ThinkPad. Yes, as a secondary device. I wouldn't buy this as my primary device, but as a secondary, if I get it on a deal, definitely yes, because it offers a great bang for your buck. And there's one wish I have though for Dell, if they later this year maybe revisit this with a full HD display, four gigabytes of RAM and the updated CPU, and keep all the good aspects and attributes of this display, I would even reconsider to switch away from my ThinkPad 8 because the hardware itself is really compelling. So that's it for my review. I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up, reshare this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. Okay, bye. I'll be back.